Europe is the new frontier for the South American crime cartels, while imports of Afghan heroin have never been so massive. The Mediterranean Sea is the crossroads of this deadly trade from east and west, creating new urgency to thwart this silent, lethal cargo. The globalization of crime has brought about an incredible intermingling of drug trade routes. Instability due to the failed war in Afghanistan has led to a 300% increase in the quantity of heroin hitting the European market. In the United States, the market is so flooded with Latin American cocaine that dealers have turned their sights to more profitable Europe. Never before has Europe been so awash with drugs. Much of it comes through the Mediterranean Sea via container ships. Well, drug trafficking uh, in general is an evolving uh, profession uh, for these criminals. And what they try to do is capitalize uh, their profits. And one of the best ways they can capitalize their profits is to mitigate risk. And of course, risk is international law enforcement. So they're constantly looking for new routes, new avenues to get their drugs to wholesale markets and ultimately consumer markets. Andrangheta. The Andrangheta is capable of paying for a cargo even when that cargo is lost. You guys are buying it. If you stop buying it, maybe the people uh, in Mexico, Venezuela, Brazil and all the rest of it will stop selling it. The drug smuggling routes follow the great trafficking highways which have changed over the years as criminal organizations have spread their web of alliances. The old tobacco and opiate routes from the east still exist, but new routes have opened up from the west as criminal organizations have expanded globally and exploited law enforcement loopholes to organize their trade. Not only drugs, but arms and people too. Italy has been at the forefront of Europe's battle against drug smuggling ever since Palermo in the 1980s became the capital of Europe's heroin production under the umbrella of the Cosa Nostra crime syndicate. The business was so profitable that soon other criminal organizations, the Camorra in Naples and the Sacra Corona Unita in Bari, also began using their ports to move drugs. Eventually, though, cocaine and the Andrangheta would supersede all the others. The Camorra and Cosa Nostra have today been largely sidelined by the notoriously violent Calabrian Mafia, the Andrangheta, whose global reach has turned Italy into a central hub for the international trafficking of drugs and other lethal cargo, which, of course, no longer need to pass through Italy at all. L'Andrangheta sicuramente ha uh, sfruttato quello che al, inizialmente è stato uh, il proprio core business, ovvero uh, The Andrangheta took advantage of what initially was the core business, the kidnapping of people. The investment in the cocaine market generated what is today a leadership in that market. Probably when in Italy, more than the Andrangheta, there was a concentration on the other criminal organizations. But at the time, like they still do today, the Andrangheta was quietly expanding its networks not only in Italy and invested in this flourishing cocaine market and building personal relationships directly with the producing organizations. Della cocaina andando a intrecciare dei rapporti personali con direttamente con le organizzazioni produttrici. 
Drug trafficking is a global threat that has required law enforcement agencies worldwide to collaborate closely. Here in Brussels, the United States Justice Department runs a key office of the DEA directed by James Allen. Yeah, originally, well, back in 2006, I was the regional director for DEA for the what we call Middle East Southwest Asia uh, region, which included Afghanistan, Pakistan, uh, all the way through Turkey and the Stan states. What we typically worked with our Turkish counterparts at that time was heroin trafficking and heroin trafficking basically up through the Balkan route, which is a very traditional route uh, through uh, Romania, Bulgaria, up through Croatia and then into Europe. The Balkan route, once the hub for heroin trafficking of the 1980s and 1990s, is now changing. Once the Albanian gangs used the migrant crisis of the 1990s to get their wares into Italy and from there to the big centers of Naples and Palermo. Heroin was sent from Europe to the USA. It was the time of the great mafia trials and the first contacts between the Colombian cartels and Italian organized crime. Uh, what we've seen as we worked uh, these massive uh, um, organizations, mostly Albanian and Turkish, where they were not only using the Balkan route, but they were starting to use what we call the Northern route, which is through the stands and then into Russia and then trickling down into Europe, and also what we call the Southern route, which is going th down through Pakistan, uh, across the Macron coast into East Africa, across the West Africa, and then up through Europe and sometimes the United States. Smuggling in and out of Eastern Europe and the Balkans is still small scale, however, compared to the massive growth in the cocaine market. Cocaine is trafficked to Europe mostly by sea, often in container shipments. Colombia remains the main source of the cocaine found in Europe, but direct shipments to Europe from Peru and Bolivia without ever having passed through North America are becoming increasingly common. In fact, smugglers are increasingly using the hundreds of ports of the Mediterranean to smuggle vast quantities of cocaine into Europe. London is one of Europe's lucrative markets. The cocaine trade in the UK began 20 years ago. And the first thousand kilo load, which was, which was smuggled into Europe, uh, and smuggled in by uh, a British crime group uh, from Liverpool, you know. Uh, they brought it in through Amsterdam, and they did that by flying over to Venezuela, making contacts with uh, Venezuelan drug dealers. Then they came back to, uh, and the, the drug dealer said to him, uh, we will give you a thousand kilos on tick, I've, on credit, if you can get the transport from Venezuela to Europe. So they flew back, they bought a boat, they'd never, uh, they'd never sailed a boat in their lives, they sailed it to Cape Verde on a test run, they thought, yeah, we can do this, they sailed it to Caracas or Vene port in Venezuela, they picked up the, the gear and then they sold, sailed it right into Amsterdam, and that was the first thousand kilo load, which that uh, and crime group ever, ever did. Uh, lots of other people in Liverpool were watching this and they thought, well, if they can do it, we can do it. So they all moved over to Amsterdam and they did it themselves. There are several ways cocaine enters the European market. Some big hauls have been uncovered in containers coming directly from South America, while others have been transported by mothership to the European or West African coast before being transferred to smaller vessels. Some cocaine is left as payment to West Africans for their assistance, which they then move on their own behalf, sometimes even by commercial air couriers. Gangs from Nigeria, who rely on a global web of Nigerian communities to ply their deadly trade, have found yet another way to take advantage of some of the most marginalized Africans who were caught up in the migrant crisis. The sheer size of Africa and the lack of any form of transnational policing 
makes drug trafficking nearly impossible to track. The world's leaders in drug smuggling, however, are Italian. Today, the largest criminal organization in Europe is the loose affiliation of Calabrian gangs and clans known as the Andrangheta. The Italian finance police in Catanzaro is on the front line combating their terrifying power. Qualunque uh, organizzazione criminale fa del lucro, del guadagno, il, la propria ragione d'essere. Every criminal organization exists to make a profit. Organizzazioni criminali di arrestare i partecipi alle stesse, di sequestrare i carichi. Apart from destroying the criminal organization, arresting those participating and confiscating the cargoes of cocaine are not, I'd like to underline, are not the first objective. Our first objective is to build a picture of the criminal clan identify its members, understand the rules, document its structure, and offer the judicial authorities enough investigative material to use in the trial as undeniable evidence, so as to deliver these criminals to justice once and for all. ...dibattimento delle prove incontrovertibili al fine di assicurare la giustizia in modo definitivo di questi criminali. The illegal drug market in Europe is worth 24 billion euros a year. These outlawed substances are consumed by millions of Europeans, and as their cost decreases, the market base widens. Cocaine is Europe's most widely used illegal stimulant, with an estimated 3.6 million people over the age of 15 having sniffed, snorted or injected it in the last year. It is second in seizures behind only cannabis. Cocaine is trafficked to Europe via both air and sea. The Indrangheta has gained control not only of the supply side of the market, but also the places of import. Using the high seas to smuggle people, waste, arms and drugs is a serious threat to international trade and regional stability as over 90% of global trade is carried out by sea. The rip-on, rip-off method, which involves putting the illegal goods into the container and then taking them out once it arrives in port, substituting the shipper's seals, is increasingly preferred to traditional concealment. It is perfect for ports where corruption is rife. The Italian Andrangheta has a man in every one of them. Ancora oggi possiamo tranquillamente dire come l'andrangheta non solo sia egemone e utilizzi i porti. Still today we can easily say that the andrangheta is not only using the Italian ports with commercial routes from those countries but also using commercial routes that involve American cargoes arriving in northern Europe. In porti per esempio del nord Europa parliamo di Rotterdam. Like Rotterdam Germany and Holland, and then transporting the drugs by truck to the national markets. They also do business with other criminal groups in the drug market, for example, by getting it to arrive in Spain and then subdividing it between local Spanish criminal gangs and the part that then goes to the Andragheta. ...da far arrivare, per esempio, in Spagna e poi ripartirla quota parte per i, uh, la delinquenza spagnola e quanto invece di competenza dell'andrangheta. Well, again, you know, the drug trade is like any other business. And uh, the traffickers, uh, the South American kingpins, uh, are going to move their cocaine to where they can make the most money. So throughout the years, at first, the markets were in the United States, where typically back in the 70s and early 80s, a kilogram of cocaine was going from anywhere from 30 to $40,000. Because they have flooded the market in the United States, now you can buy a kilogram of cocaine for under $15,000 in some parts of the United States. So these drug traffickers started to look for different markets because they flooded the United States market. So they saw that there was a ripe market in Western and Eastern Europe. Spain has got a, uh, uh, the, Spain and Britain have got the highest prevalence of cocaine use in Europe. And that's because 
the gear comes into Spain and therefore it's cheap and a lot of people use it and distribute it in Spain. And there's a big market in Britain because we're a rich country full of people who like to take drugs you know, not only working class people, but middle class people is a huge market. Therefore, there's a huge prevalence. And it was the it was the Mexican ambassador to the UK who told me that. Uh, and the point he was making is that uh, the point he was making, uh, and he was speaking for the whole of South and, South and Central America, is that uh, the crime groups in South and Central America have refocused the uh, the their sales from the States to Europe because they can make a living at it. There's people who will buy it. The story shifts to Spain and the ports of Cadiz and Valencia. Spain is, by cultural affinity, the closest port of call for the South American cartels. Daniel Santiago leads Spain's elite Greco organized crime investigation unit. Principally, the narco-traffickers' relationship with Spain is basically that they come from producing countries, which is something I follow. They are Colombian and from other South American countries, but mainly Colombian, and there are various reasons. The main one going back to the time of the Schengen Treaty. And since the easiest place for a South American to enter is Spain, because it is easy for them to get in, get resident status. It's the place where they can hide best, because this is where the largest Colombian and Latino American community lives. A lot of people, most of whom do legal jobs, so here they get lost in the crowd. They don't attract attention. Today, the European cocaine market is so valuable that Colombian producers are prepared to take enormous risks in order to get massive quantities across the Atlantic, hiding it in containers. The camouflage is usually done with containers or else with drug mules. Usually it comes in by ship. There are many methods. A method that I would call camouflage, for example, involved pineapples from Costa Rica in which the pineapples they were in a container of pineapples. They had opened the pineapples, extracting the flesh of the pineapple, filled it with a container painted yellow, closed the pineapple completely, in the fruit boxes themselves, the cocaine was hidden between the layers of cardboard. The same goes for shoes. In a recent case, the sole of the chute is corrugated and the cocaine is placed in the spaces which are then covered by a plastic sheet. In December 2015, importers tried a new, ingenious way of hiding their cargo. It was in the port of Cadiz and when the cargo was opened, they thought it was mixed in with the charcoal. The surprise was that it was mixed, it was inside the pallets. Why was it surprising? Because the pallets looked as though they were of wood. Usually we are looking for a hiding place, something that's been painted or it's in a tank. But no, this time if you touch it, if you handle it, it seems like wood. The heist was coordinated with the National Crime Agency in the UK, working on a tip-off. It was worth 240 million euros on the European market. It was a shipment of charcoal with a total of 1,520 kilos of cocaine, of which 550 kilos were hidden in the charcoal, and the pallets used to carry the charcoal were made of 1,400 kilos of cocaine. We worked with the NCA, the English, in this operation, and we arrested four people in Spain, and they arrested another six people in Dubai and Liverpool. We also found a very large laboratory to be used to extract the cocaine from the pallets. They will own or have control of a huge container ship or part of that ship. That's how much pull they've got. Uh, and they will, <clears throat> several groups will invest in a big load, maybe uh, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 kilo loads of cocaine, 
cannabis heroin, even though this may be coming from South America. Uh, and then they will, they will bring it over and they will beach it in Spain, either directly into a port or they will, uh, off coast, they will bring it in on smaller vessels. We, we, we have seen a dramatic increase in the amount of cocaine seizures that are occurring in the ports uh, throughout Europe, specifically Spain, Italy, uh, Holland, uh, where before we were seeing multi-hundred kilogram seizures. Uh, now we're seeing multi-ton seizures on a regular basis. Now that's twofold, the reason's twofold. One, there's a good market here. Uh, two, and secondly, there is a glut of cocaine available in South America. So they're literally flooding Europe as they did the United Sp States back in the 90s. Traditionally, uh, Spain has been a haven for criminals. Now in addition to that, it's also a good place to smuggle drugs into from South America and Central America because of its coastline and because of the historical connections. So criminals who based themselves there became uh, very good drug dealers and they, they were able to uh, beach drugs in Spain and then transport it back to Liverpool or London for distribution. The drugs were destined for the UK market via ports in the Netherlands. As far as the information we have is concerned, the main route of entry for cocaine into Europe through the use of containers is deviating from Spain to the Netherlands. Obviously, they use Spain still, but a massive amount goes to Holland, much more than through Spain, and that's affecting the price, which is much cheaper in Holland than in Spain. Listen, if you're a crime reporter, Amsterdam is a, is a great place to uh, do stories about because, uh, well, for, uh, for many different reasons, it's got a big crime heritage. People have been dealing drugs there for 30, 40 years, so it's well established. It's, it's in the fabric of their society. Uh, there are lots of crime groups all over the world, you know, you have Vietnamese, you get Croatian, you get Yugoslav, Russians, you get lots and lots of British uh, gangsters and according to the National Crime Police in Holland, they, they effectively run Amsterdam, uh, isn't that they're the senior crime group who people, people deal with. Actually identifying the ships that are worth intercepting is a nightmare for the overstretched police forces of Europe. Most of the ships are targeted based on a points system that analyzes risk based on who owns the vessels and their port of call history. 1,800 ships follow this route, sailing boats, container ships, fishing vessels. It's a very busy route. If we were talking about cars, you ask why not set up a roadblock? Where do you set up a roadblock and what car would you stop? I'd stop an old car with four strange people aboard. I'd stop it. But you're in a place where a thousand cars go by and you can't stop all of them. The ships at risk of carrying cocaine are identified as those with African crews or older ships on their last voyage or ships that stop off in suspect ports. Normally, there are two types of boats carrying cocaine and we're talking boats, not container ships. They are sailboats or fishing boats. What we look out for in a sailboat is the crew, people traveling alone or two people whose financial profile wouldn't be such that you'd expect them to be on a journey like that. For example, a Bulgarian. We stopped one recently, a Bulgarian who traffics drugs with other people in this country, goes to the Caribbean, buys a boat in the Caribbean, and returns home in the boat alone. This isn't normal. Other import techniques involve smugglers using fishing boats and offloading the drugs at sea. Talking about fishing boats, it's a technique that is less used now but was common earlier, and we identify them more or less by their profiles. Usually they are very old fishing boats, probably on their last voyage. 
They are so decrepit that their owners wouldn't send them out under normal circumstances. Close to the Spanish coast, they offload and then they sink. They let them sink, obviously not with the crew aboard, the crew gets off. They buy these boats because it's their last voyage from South America to Spain or Europe, and the crews usually come from over there, from poor countries, Venezuela or the Caribbean, or they are mixed crews that include Africans, Europeans, and the South Americans. Apart from the massive cargoes sent to supply the growing demand for cocaine in Europe, there are also smaller quantities being shipped using simple methods. The most common method is called blind pickup in Spanish, or in English, rip off, rip on. You have a legal business, you are a legal person. I have a legal business, and I'm a legal person. You send me fruit from South America, nothing but fruit, a legal cargo. This container is in the port of any country. Without you knowing it, a worker of the port opens the container and puts bags or backpacks with cocaine inside the container. They close the container, and the container comes to Spain, to me, with my legal business, importing fruit. This container comes to a Spanish port, and workers in the Spanish port open the container, take out the bag, and close the container. So that means you and I have transported drugs in our container without knowing it, because you are legal, I am legal, and it is a legal business. When the stupefacient is uh, direct in uh, porti altamente, diciamo così, uh, controllati come quello di Gioia Tauro. Uh, when the drugs are headed to highly controlled ports, like that of Gioia Tauro, we often come across a great capacity of the criminals to hide the cargo. Grande capacità della, uh, della, delle consorterie criminali uh, di celare i carichi. È vero che molte indagini hanno dimostrato come spesso it's true that many investigations have shown how they can count on unfaithful workers inside the port structure that guarantee that they will recover the cargo. It is no longer only the South American cartels that are importing cocaine. In 2016, a drug smuggling ring based in Chechnya was broken up in Spain. Operación Draco Groza se centraba sobre un grupo de nacionales chechenos. We concentrated on a group of Chechen origin that was led by an ex-member of the Chechen Special Forces, and it was subdivided into groups or cells of not more than two or three people, each of which had a specific task within the group. The special trait this criminal gang presented was the distribution of tasks, making it resemble an almost military organization so that one member of the cell did not know exactly what the others were doing. In September 2016, the police of Valencia again found a half-ton cargo of cocaine and 150 kilos of marijuana in an apartment rented by the gang. They also discovered a laboratory where the cocaine could be processed and subdivided into saleable units. This organization, this criminal gang, rented a series of apartments in the suburbs of the city of Valencia and looked for houses and urban centers far from the center of town. These houses had to have certain characteristics, such as easy access for the entry and exit of the drugs, and had to be in an area with many neighbors so as to pass unobserved more easily and make inspection by police forces more difficult. The Chechen traffickers used every trick to protect the drug stashes. As far as finding the drugs in the house is concerned, they didn't just hide it, they walled it up. It was hidden in the ventilation system, the walls, in the furniture, above and below, so that we literally had to break down the walls to get to the drugs. It happened that the registers of the quantities held in the houses showed what they held as small quantities so that the police might find a part of the stash and not continue with the search and would not find the whole quantity they held. The typical laboratory that you find in Spain, not only in Spain but in Europe, are laboratories for cutting and adulteration of the drugs. 
with the new methods that exist, we are finding laboratories for transforming the drugs. They are essentially chemical laboratories. The Greco unit found a laboratory with sulfuric acid, boric acid, kerosene, with many products, because they had to be able to break down the pallets made of cocaine mixed with other extraneous materials, such as wood and plastic, and extract it, separate it. So it is a laboratory designed to extract cocaine. This apartment was occupied by the most important member of the organization, the leader, who has a criminal record for arms and drugs trafficking and prostitution, among other crimes committed in this country. And as I said, he was the leader of the group we rounded up and was supported by others, the cell that organized the logistics of the organization. Spain seems to be the frontier of the cocaine trade, the place where, today, the floodgates are open. On the other side of the Mediterranean, in Italy, Michele Di Nunno is the Calabrian coordinator of the National Organized Crime Investigation Unit at the Finance Police, the GICO, and has been monitoring the rise of the Calabrian organized crime gang known as the Andrangheta. This organization is especially difficult to keep track of due to its low hierarchies and multi-family organization. Fear of the Andrangheta, notorious for its cruelty, guarantees secrecy and loyalty among its clan members. This deeply ingrained culture of secrecy and loyalty has gained it the trust of the Colombian cartels. In July 2016, Italy's anti-mafia prosecutor, Franco Roberti, and the GICO announced the arrest of 144 people between Colombia, Costa Rica, and Italy at the end of a surveillance and interception operation named Due Mari, which was the Italian part of an ongoing DEA campaign known as Angry Pirate 2. L'Andrangheta faceva arrivare in Italia il, uh, lo stupefacente. The Andrangheta imported the drugs into Italy. Our investigation began because, as we were following certain members of families in the Ionian area of the province of Reggio Calabria, we were seeing a lot of trips of these people back and forth from Costa Rica. The cocaine delivered to multiple ports in Italy originated in jungle laboratories in Venezuela and Colombia and was transferred to cargo ships to be brought to Europe via Costa Rica. Approfittando degli ingentissimi eh, delle ingentissime spedizioni di carichi di frutta tropicale dal Costa Rica. Taking advantage of the massive shipments of tropical fruit coming from Costa Rica into Italy, they would bring cocaine in as well. The Due Mari investigation closed by the Antimafia Directorate of Reggio Calabria executed by the GICO of Catanzaro and the specialist group Goa shows how Costa Rica was the departure point of massive shipments of cocaine headed for Livorno. So the cocaine was hidden in with the tropical fruit. The cocaine that arrived to Livorno and so in the fruit tropical fruit was sold the cocaine itself. The ports of entry of the massive volume of cocaine in the Due Mari operation were Civitavecchia, close to Rome, and Livorno. The drugs were eventually to be sent to the port of Mestre, where the organization had a laboratory. L'Andrangheta is probably the first grossist of cocaine. The Andrangheta is the world's largest wholesaler of cocaine. It has such strong ties that go back decades, many decades, and has such stable relations with the cartels, as I said before, the cartels that manage the transport of cocaine from South America. Such as to be identified as the foremost criminal organization in this area and has such good relations and offers such guarantees as not to have competitors. Dedita a questo e conseguentemente ha dei rapporti talmente forti e offre 
delle garanzie tali da uh, non avere concorrenti. A new source of cocaine has entered the market with the rise of other forms of trafficking in Europe. Brazil. L'andrangheta, qualora ritenga di poter sfruttare uh, il porto If at any time the Andrangheta thinks it can take advantage of any port in Brazil or a port of departure of cocaine in any other state, it has no trouble creating and stabilizing relationships as it can draw on the fact that it is a respected organization. Modificare dei rapporti perché può far sempre riferimento a quel suo essere una organizzazione rispettata. However, Brazil is also host to a community that offers incalculable advantages in drug distribution. The Nigerian community in Sao Paulo offered the cocaine producers a back door to Europe. Over the last five years, West Africa has become a hub of cocaine smuggling, but not only. What's interesting about Africa is that it's been uncharted territory for international law enforcement for some time. Uh, there's vast areas that uh, are basically unpoliced. And a lot of parts of Africa, we don't know what's going on. But what we do know what's going on along the west coast and east coast of Africa, we're starting to see massive shipments of both heroin on the Macron coast, the east side of Africa, and cocaine on the western side of Africa. What Drug trafficking typically does, it destabilizes a region. And they look, drug traffickers look for destabilization in regions to move their drugs. What better area to go to than Africa? Guinea-Bissau, Nigeria, Senegal are not only important places of departure of migrants, but also entry points and hubs for the drug trade. DEA has always uh, had a, a big interest in Nigerian trafficking organizations. Uh, literally, there is a trafficking organization with Nigerian roots in every major city in the United States. Luckily, we have a great working relationship with our counterparts in Nigeria. We have a robust program, an international program, with them. Uh, why there is such a transnational uh, presence as far as these Nigerian networks, who knows? But you're right, they, they have their um, prongs in every city across the world. These networks are set up and they're constantly moving, most of the time, smaller amounts of, of drugs. You're not going to see Nigeria, Nigerian trafficking organizations moving tons of cocaine, but you're going to see Nigerian organizations moving six couriers on an airplane, each digested one kilogram of cocaine, for instance. East Africa, too, has become a player in the drug trade, with a heroin trail that leads from Afghanistan through Kenya and across the continent. Heroin coming through the Macron coast from Pakistan, it'll go into cities like Nairobi. There it can be carried via courier, uh, you know, via commercial air uh, to uh, different cities in Europe. Uh, many times it will go via uh, the water uh, to uh, other ports. Uh, many times uh, we have anecdotal, anecdotic uh, information that uh, there's things, there's tr uh, drugs traffic, or there's heroin that's going across the continent uh, via uh, road to West Africa where it's then swung up into uh, Europe and sometimes the United States. Recent seizures in Africa include shipments of heroin from Iran that were intercepted by the Australian Navy patrolling the Indian Ocean between Oman and Kenya under anti-terrorism operation Manitou. In two years, the Australian Navy has confiscated and destroyed over four tons of heroin. In late 2016, British aristocrat Jack Marion was arrested on charges of importing 100 kilos of cocaine in bags of fertilizer to be delivered to a sugar business in Uganda. He denies the charges. However, over the last decade, Mombasa has become a hub for drug smuggling into Africa, according to the United Nations. Sometimes the routes being used for drug trafficking overlap with other profitable trades, such as arms and people smuggling, as well as other illegal activities, all being overseen by so-called super facilitators. 
one thing that we've targeted recently, and actually this method started uh, in Africa, is targeting what we call the super facilitators. These are, these are people that can do a various amounts of illegal activity from arms sales to narcotic sales to human smuggling. They have their hands in all sorts of different crimes. DEA, along with our counterparts, have started to target these organizations. And by targeting the organizations, not only are we disrupting drug trafficking organizations, we're disrupting terrorist organizations that are operating pretty much with impunity all over the world. What happens on the open ocean in ships and boats crossing the Atlantic and Indian Oceans and the Mediterranean Sea docking at European ports is difficult to monitor. Even just tracking ships is hard, despite AIS technology. However, most of the trade is legal, and finding drug consignments is like hunting for a needle in a haystack. Undermining the profit of the traffickers seems to be the only way of combating the gangs. Fighting the Calabrian Ndrangheta is a complex task, and, as with other criminal organizations, involves tracking down personal property and laundered investments. To take away a cocaine cargo from an organization causes damage, but alongside this we also carry out what I believe is an ever more effective attack against illicit capital. With the rise of the merciless Andrangheta across Germany and throughout Europe, and the cocaine cartels in Central and South America, the outlook for Europe's war against drugs is bleak. In London, you know, there are a large number, and, and, and lots of other cities in Britain, there's large numbers of US-style street gangs who fight, you know, and use firearms to, to, to kill each other and protect their drug dealing operations. So that's a reality, and that's been going on since 2000, uh, two, 2002, 2003, 2004. So we're kind of uh, a decade or more on from that. But we haven't reached the, the levels of uh, gang crime what's in the United States. And I don't know why, you know, but may that, maybe that will happen. However, by flooding Europe's market with cheap cocaine, the traffickers are undermining their own market, the same way they did in the United States. Uh, just recently, I, I viewed some statistics to where just back in 2014, a kilogram of cocaine in Central Europe would cost around thirty-five to forty thousand dollars. Now, today, 2016, it's down to twenty-five thousand wholesale. Now, that's between if you're buying ten and hundred kilograms of cocaine. But the the prices are starting to go down. So the question is, what's the next market that's going to be flooded in Europe? The ever-growing demand for drugs of every kind in Europe is feeding this deadly market. The middle-class populations of London, Amsterdam, Rome and Madrid are taking cocaine more than ever before, and the economic crisis seems not to have changed the market at all. The extent of the financial power of the drug barons is still largely unknown but the efforts to combat the trafficking of their lethal cargo continues to be one of Europe's most pressing security concerns.